This was a period in history that was shattering for most of Europe. For people to re-examine it can only be a good thing. My name's Ian Forrest and I've edited this book, Home Thoughts and Foreign Fields, a collection of stories about local people and the impact of the war on Penrith and surrounding area. This is the beginning of a series of events. I'd been asked some months ago to set a date, launch the book, make it known that people would come, the people who had participated, who had suggested a story to me, or in many cases written a story, get their book, they would see it for the first time, go into a corner and look for the bit they'd done and see if it had come out all right. That is very important that the local community should read what's been written, knowing that it's been contributed by them. The book brings into play a wide range of experiences from different points of view, particularly setting side by side the experience of the soldiers, which was dreadful, with the home experience, the home front who were trying to cope. People came along who had brought out into the public arena things that they had had stored, memories. I saw the appeal on the internet for people who had uh, war memorabilia that was to do with Penrith and I have my grandmother's autograph book here and she was a VAD in Penrith during the First World War. It's very unique primary evidence I think first and foremost because some of the things that the soldiers have written about they probably wouldn't have been allowed to write in letters home because it had been censored. You identify with the people in the stories, individual people and families with a connection with Penrith. I've been very moved by some of the stories. One section deals with how Penrith as a town, the businesses, the farms around, managed as men were taken off to war and they had to plough the fields with far fewer people. At the time of the First World War, there were a number of newspapers in Penrith with staffing shortages, with people volunteering. It was a more of a joint effort that a newspaper was produced each week. The Herald has made available its archive to the Penrith Remembers Group, researching all the names of all the people who've been mentioned at all in any articles during the 1914-18 war. We were able to pinpoint stories that progressed through the war. It was from this article, which dates back to the 5th of September 1914, we see that one of the recruits that signed up was Mr Ernest Irving, a junior reporter on the Herald, and it's his story that we see detailed in the book Home Thoughts and Foreign Fields under the headline Pain of War Hit Home at the Herald. What really hit home for me about the story of Ernest is that he would have been 22 when he left the Herald and, and signed up for war, which would have been you know, a year after I joined the Herald at 21. So this is affecting real people from Penrith, all walks of Penrith life. It's such a, a poignant thing to think that uh, 100 years ago, someone was walking steps that we could have walked if we were there 100 years ago. And that is why it's important. That's why we need to remember.